Hello, America. It's great to see you. And you look like you could use some good news. And we may not know who our president is yet, but I'll tell you one thing we know for sure. Jesus Christ is Lord. Yeah, that's what we're here to say in our Jesus 2020 election update. What a night we had at Jesus 2020. I wanna thank all of you who were watching. There were a lot of you out there and also everybody who was here at the church on the front lawn. What a blessed evening of thinking about Jesus through worship, through prayer, through studying the Bible. Uh, and at the end of the night, the presidential election was too close to call and here we are two days later saying the exact same thing. So I want to encourage you, my friend, don't put your hope in the count. Don't put your hope in the court. Put your hope in the Lord Jesus Christ because he will not disappoint you. He won't let you down. He is still in charge right now. And his name is Jesus, the name above every name. And so, wow, if you look at the map, there has been a lot of talk about how we woke up the next day and Michigan and Wisconsin were all of a sudden blue for Joe Biden and what's gonna happen in Nevada. Uh, is Trump gonna take Georgia? Is Trump gonna take North Carolina? Is Arizona called for Biden or can Trump still take it? And then so much focus on Pennsylvania and what is gonna happen there. And so the talk continues. You can see the update at least at the time we're filming this is Joe Biden's got 264 electoral votes. Trump's at 214, and President Trump, if all the states go for him, he gets over 270. Joe Biden just needs one more state. So that's the tension that's been now developing this whole day. And one other update I wanna give you is the, the Congress. A lot going on in the Senate and the House, but uh, in our district right here, CA 48, where our church is in Huntington Beach. We gave you an update before that Harley Ruda had a lead on Michelle Steele. Well, I think it's now 94% reported and Michelle Steele, you can see, is now ahead of Harley Ruda. So, but even that's not called yet. It's not done yet. It's still being counted. So uh, it feels like election day has become election week and I want to share with you something that I, if you can just leave all that news behind God has elected a ruler and I want you to see him in a way that will really encourage you and that's why we're here for scripture of the day Today's chapters are Isaiah 45 and 46. And I wanna encourage you to open the Bible with me. Take a look in God's book, everybody, because God's gonna tell you who he elected, who he chose to be the ruler, and his name is Cyrus. So this is one of the really cool prophecies in all of the scripture. And if you don't know about Cyrus, or even if you do, let's gather around and let's think about this for a second, because here's how God starts it. Thus says the Lord, Yahweh, to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped. So here's God reaching down to raise up this guy, Cyrus. Now we're reading through the Isaiah 40 chapters. I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. And remember, it started with the prophecy about Babylon judging Judah. Babylon's gonna come in, they're gonna take the storehouses of gold, the things in the temple, the young men there in, in Jerusalem, and they're gonna take them all back to Babylon. That's the prophecy, judgment is coming. Well now, after Babylon, there's gonna be the Medes and the Persians. Well, Cyrus is gonna be a ruler of the Persians. He's gonna be the one that lets God's people go back to Jerusalem to rebuild the city, to refound the temple. And so now it's a prophecy on top of a prophecy. You're gonna be judged through Babylon, and then Cyrus is the guy that I'm gonna raise up. So God raises up rulers of nations for his sovereign purposes. So we gotta start thinking about that here in America. 
not just who's going to be our president, who were you voting for for president, no, but what is God raising up the next president to accomplish? What is God's purpose in our worldly rulers? And what's so interesting is Cyrus doesn't even know God. He doesn't even worship God in the way that we would think of someone who is saved, who has a relationship with God. No, look at verse 4. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I'm calling out Cyrus uh, over a hundred years beforehand here. I'm telling you who's going to send you back after a 70-year exile. Here's who's going to send you back. I name you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord. There is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I equip you, though you do not know me. So Cyrus didn't even have to buy into God's plan. He didn't even have to know about God's plan. He didn't even have to know and worship Yahweh. God was going to use Cyrus for his purpose no matter what Cyrus thought. So God is the one giving us a prophecy of raising up a ruler of a nation that was going to be for the benefit of his people in a way they would have never seen coming. This is an epic prophecy of Cyrus. Now, if you haven't heard about Cyrus before, or if you have, let's really think about this, okay? And what I brought with me here is a copy of my Hebrew Tanakh, all right? Uh, the Hebrew Bible, they broke it down into three books, the Law of Moses, first five books, the Prophets, which we're going through, Isaiah right there in the middle of the Prophets, and the Writings was the third book. Now what I've got here with my English ESV journal set is I've arranged them in the copy of the order of the books of the Hebrew Bible. And what you're gonna see is that Isaiah comes right here in the middle. This is where Isaiah would be. It's right here. It's in the middle of the prophets, the first of the written prophets. But it talks about Cyrus. Well, we're going to really learn about Cyrus way over here at the end. Cyrus is going to show up in the book of Daniel, which is towards the end of the writings in the Hebrew Bible. And King Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians, we go to Babylon, we see the judgment of God's people, Daniel's there, and then guess what? Here come the Medes and the Persians, and one of the rulers of them is Cyrus the Persian. You read about him in the book of Daniel. Then you get to Ezra and Nehemiah, which are combined together as one book, even though it's two in English. Ezra and Nehemiah are one book in the Hebrew Bible. And Ezra chapter 1, verse 1, there's a king there. He sends the people back to Jerusalem to rebuild it. Guess what his name is, everybody? Say his name. God called him by name a hundred years beforehand. Cyrus does it. You can read about that in Ezra chapter 1. Also, Chronicles. Not first and second Chronicles, just Chronicles. In the Hebrew Bible, it's actually the last book. It's a reviewing of the history of Israel. And if you go to 2 Chronicles 36, 22, guess who's there telling the people they can go back? It's Cyrus. So you, got, you can even see by the layout of the Hebrew Bible that this prophecy is coming to us way ahead of time before it happens. It's telling us how the story is going to end for God's people at the end of the Hebrew Bible, and it's calling it beforehand, and that's a way that God is putting his signature on it and showing off and saying, hey, I want to tell you how it's going to happen before it ever happens, so when it happens, you'll know it was me, and there's no one like me. I am the Lord. That's what God's saying in today's chapter. And if you follow the flow of thought all the way from Isaiah 45, look at verse 22, and that here's the final conclusion. If God can hundreds of years in the future pick who he wants to be the ruler of Persia and wants to send his people back from 70 years of exile, well then here's the conclusion. If God's really the sovereign ruler over all the nations and kings on earth, well then turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. By myself I have sworn, from my mouth has gone out in righteousness a word that shall not return. To me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear allegiance. Boom! There it is in this chapter, Isaiah 45, where God prophesies it's going to be Cyrus. He's going to win my election. He's going to be the ruler that sends you back after your judgment. That's when God drops that every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess. And we know ultimately from Philippians 2, 9 through 11, what are they going to say? 
Jesus 2020 or Jesus is Lord for all of eternity. Everybody is going to have the 2020 vision to see it's really all about Jesus in the end. That's the prophecy of what we know as Philippians 2, 9 to 11 is right here when God is talking about Cyrus. Wow. Now, if you keep going to Isaiah 46, first line, bell bows down, Nebo stoops. Maybe you're not familiar with the Bell and Nebo characters, and you're like, what's going on there? Well, right away it says their idols are on beasts and livestock, so that might give you a big clue. But Bell and Nebo are idols in Babylon, right? Let's think about that. Some of the names we know. You ever heard of a king named Belshazzar? Well, he might be named after one of the Babylonian gods, Bell. Or maybe you've heard about this guy, Nebuchadnezzar, right? He might be named after the Babylonian idol, Nebo. And so here's a picture of Babylon on the run, fleeing, or here comes destruction from Cyrus. Here come the Medes and the Persians. Watch out, Babylon, Cyrus coming to get you. And so we put our idols, Bel and Nebo, we put them on carts and we're trying to get them away. And look how Weary, the beasts of burden are. Look at those animals trying to pull those carts with those idols. The idols can't even move themselves. The poor animals that have got to carry the idols. See, God now he's doing something he loves to do, a little idolatry trash talk, everybody. And he's saying, yeah, better get those. Hey, Babylon, you better get your idols on some carts. Better get some animals to carry your gods around. And then he's coming right to Jacob, right to Israel, right to his people. And he's saying, hey, you guys ever had to carry me? Or am I the one who's been carrying you this whole time? I have carried you. And even when you're old, I will carry you because I am God and there is no one besides me. What a, what a beautiful uh, way that God puts it. He gives you the picture of the Babylonian idols who are gonna be, Babylon's gonna be defeated by Cyrus. Here's their idols fleeing, the people trying to carry their idols away on these carts with these beasts of burden. And then God just comes in to encourage his people. Hey, didn't I carry you out of Egypt? Haven't I carried you all the way up to now? I'm gonna keep carrying you all the way home. Hey, if, God, if, if we've gotten anywhere in America, it's because God blessed us. God carried us. God made it happen. We're not out of spiraling out of control. May seem like that if you watch the news. May seem like that if you're looking for the vote count update or the court case that's going to prove everything. But let me just tell you, God, he's the one who decides our ruler here in America. And if you have your faith in the Lord, don't, you don't have to carry things around. He will carry you. What a beautiful scripture for us to study on a day when we don't know who our president is, but we know who God is, and there's no one like him. So God bless America. God bless you and your family. Keep reading that Bible, praying for revival. And uh, let me just say this, that right now might be a time where we are all tempted to get frustrated with our fellow Americans. You see some people that don't agree with you right now, getting angry at them. Well, yeah, we need to pray that there will be a great change in America. We need to pray for repentance, for a turning to God. We need to turn to God so we can be saved. But don't just pray for America to change. You might need to be the one who changes yourself. At least that's how it was for our friend, Steve Brown. Hi, I'm Steve Brown. Uh, I was a teacher at Huntington Beach High School for about 20 years. Teaching is a great, rewarding profession. And uh, if you like people, uh, you, just, you just love the job. And if you love the subject matter you're teaching, uh, it's, a perfect, it's a perfect world in a sense. But uh, it wasn't a perfect world. As a teacher, there were a couple of things that really uh, started to upset me. One of the problems was the, uh, the people who ran the school. The other part, which was even more alarming, was the total apathy, if you will, of the students. They just didn't care. I mean, as a teacher, I tried uh, threats, <laughs> humor, uh, rewards, uh, entertaining classes. For the majority of the students, it, it just didn't work. There's really nothing I could do to correct that. 
and uh, that got very, very depressing. So I was uh, looking at the future and uh, I saw some real major problems for America. After I retired, this depression settled in and I had to admit to myself that uh, on one hand I had a lot of success, on the other hand, um, I was not happy with myself, the way my life was, and uh, um, I realized that uh, there was a higher power that could solve this problem because it was certainly beyond my capability, certainly my pay grade. So uh, I uh, started casting about for a church to go to, and uh, fortuitously, you could say, or perhaps miraculously, um, my brother, who lives all the way up in San Fernando, informed me that they just opened up a church down here in Huntington Beach called Compass Bible Church. So uh, people were very, very friendly, uh, suspiciously friendly. And uh, at the end of that service, uh, they were friendly when I was leaving. Like, not that they were happy to see me go, mind you, but uh, there, there was something going on here. I was getting a lot of information, and the thing that kept me coming back, I, I knew I was hearing the truth. And it didn't take long before uh, I realized, hey, Brown, um, you know, you're part of the problem. And although I perceived myself as one of the good guys with that comparative uh, uh, kind of morality, uh, uh, I really needed a savior myself. So I used to think that America's got an awful lot of problems. and. Uh, a lot of people out there got to change, but then uh, I realized that I'm part of the problem and I got to change and Jesus changed me.